Hello and welcome to the studio. This film doesn't belong to a particular playlist or anything like that. I just decided to do it because I'm doing a really interesting piece of inking up at the moment and I thought it might be useful to you. I am working on a print for a print conference called Impact 12 for an open portfolio that is all about rainbow rolls. And I've decided that I would like to do a, a liner cut that's really focused on the sky. So I want to talk you through how I'm creating a very, very delicate series of rainbow rolls for a dawn sky with clouds. So here I have a rainbow roll that I printed yesterday and what I want to show you is adding a rainbow roll of clouds to that. So this is how it will look when I've got the cloud on. But before I do that I should explain that this is printed on a Japanese washi paper. This is Hosho paper that I'm using here, which is a nice, sensitive, lightweight paper that I like for small prints. And this rainbow roll is bleeding from yellow into blue without green. And uh, there's already been quite a bit of chat on social media about how I've done this. And what I would say is that the trick when you're mixing up colours for a sky like this is um, to make the colours a little dirtier than you think. Between this yellow and this blue up here there is an area of a sort of tawny orange and I am using that tawny orange in a more intense form again for the cloud layer but here I'm printing with an incredibly thin layer of ink, very extended ink and that tawny orange, it sort of changes into almost like a sort of grey non colour, but it makes the transition between yellow and blue with no green. So that's the first layer I've printed. Now, I inked up my block and I printed it, um, printed the entire block for you to show you what the next layer would look like if I didn't do a few things to it. So here you can see I've got my clouds, there's a tiny flock of birds there, and then there's the landscape in the foreground. And um, that would be okay, except that the more ink I ink up and put on these layers, the clumsier these grasses are going to get. So, and also the same for the little birds. So I really don't want to put any ink on them at this stage. I don't want them in these colours. I'd rather they were not part of the equation. So in a minute, I'm going to show you the setup on my press that will avoid over inking any bits of delicate detail. But before I do that, let me just show you the inks. So I'm going to move that out of the way. So over here, I have got my inks for the cloud. Now these are more intense colours that I, than I used for the sky itself. But again, the trick for mixing these, I've used quite a lot of Van Dyke Brown in all of these colours. They look quite candy bright, but actually they're a muddle of, there's Payne's Grey in here, there's Van Dyke Brown, and there's lots of extender. So I am making the colours a little bit more complex and a little dirtier. Um, I read a marvellous book by uh, Yoshida Toshi, um, I'll put the reference in the notes, and he mentions in his Japanese woodblock landscapes that he quite often uses um, a layer of grey in his printing to, again, get that kind of knocked back colour that is very effective for skies. So a little muckier than you would think. The other thing I'm doing is I'm using a large roller for the, for the block and I am working the ink a lot before I use the um, roller on the block. This is oil-based ink. It's thick, sorry, I will try that again. This is oil-based ink and it's thick tropic which means that the more you work it, the more fluid it becomes and the better it works. So I spend quite a lot of time over here at the slab rolling the ink out before it goes anywhere near my lino. The other thing that I do is periodically I take 
a palette knife and I go around the edges and I take away any bits around the edge that might start to get grossy. Here I've got a whole load of ink on my palette knife which has got bits of dust and bits, bits and pieces in it. So I'm constantly trying to keep that very thin layer of ink as smooth as possible when I'm printing. So before we go over to the press, let's just have a last look at the print, how I want it to appear with just the clouds and without any of this detail here that will be printed at another layer. So here we are at my smaller Albion press and here is my piece of lino. So before I show you the inking, I should just say that I am printing a reduction print here. You can see I've got my foreground and the clouds and the little birds, but I've also got this patch of lino up here and that is there to hold the bed of the, uh, to hold the weight level while it's making the print. So by keeping this little bit here, it keeps that flat weight in balance. I've chamfered and the edge very carefully, smoothing it off so that there aren't any hard ridges that are going to emboss onto the finished print. So that's just there for balance. And I also have got two um, masks. So I first saw this in David Bull's studio in um, Tokyo. And it's a method that he uses when he's making um, Japanese woodblock prints, but it works very effectively for lino as well. So first off, what it allows me to do is to ink up and here, for example, there's ink all over here because the roller hits it and I don't want that to print. So all I need to do before I ink up is to pull away the mask, do my inking and that goes down and protects it. Same thing goes for down here. This is one of those cheap plastic folders that you get to put notes in. This is uh, a sheet of, I think this is acetate. I, I came into a bag full of this uh, many years ago, uh, left over from some family project, um, and I've been using it ever since. It, it makes a very good mask, it's just lightweight and I can clean it down periodically when it gets too sticky. So I am going to ink up now and show you the next stage. So I have my roller and I'm going to go across at the diagonal because I want the clouds, uh, the rainbow roll on the roller to sort of curve round slightly. So I'm not thinking at this point about the rest of the block. As far as I'm concerned, the, it can ink up as it wishes. What I am concerned about is getting a nice smooth deposit of ink over the cloud area. So I'm just taking my time going back and forth until I'm happy. So now I've got an old sheet and I like this sheet because it's pure cotton and it's been laundered to death and it has no stray fibres on it. It's very smooth. And what I'm going to do inevitably with that big fat roller putting on a rainbow roll, I've got ink in the dead space and I'm just going to give that a little wipe to get rid of any bits and bobs around the edges. And then I'm going to start taking out the detail I don't want to ink up. And I'm just wiping it away. And that's simply so that we don't get that build up of ink on the fine detail. So that when I do finally print it, it's lovely and crisp. And apologies for the noise. That was just Doris coming in through the cat flap. And here I'm taking out that little flock of birds. So now I've wiped those down. I can flip the masks back into place and check they're lying all right. And then down goes the press. And you can see where the registration device that I use for teaching and um, we sell dates from. This is the, the old original from many years ago that I've been using in my press Oh, since about 2005. Very effective. So now I'm going to put 
a reasonable amount of pressure on this. I've got three pieces of card here. So because it's a very thin layer, I'm going to put a reasonable amount of pressure on. Okay. If I just turn that round and lay that down, you can see that's giving me those clouds, but I've not got any detail that I didn't want in that big corner and that I've left for balancing the weight doesn't show at all. So I'm going to hang that up now and it'll be on to the next layer. So there you are. That is how I have got these delicate little clouds in this delicate sky and how using that technique layer by layer is going to give me that crisp, fine detail at the end of it. And yes, it's a faff. And yes, I'm going to have to do that 50 times to get the result I want. But I think it is well worth it. And um, it's a technique that works if you want this kind of effect. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm sorry this was a bit random and doesn't fit into a playlist, but we'll be back on the case next week and I hope you'll join us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also if you've enjoyed this video, um, hit the like button too and hopefully I will see you again soon.